In the final section of chapter 11, we're going to talk about different coordinate systems. As you'll recall in section 11.1, .1, we discussed the rectangular coordinate system, and now we're introducing two more three-dimensional coordinate systems, specifically cylindrical and spherical. We're going to get started with cylindrical because it's actually very familiar to something that we learned about in calculus 2. Um, way back in section 10.2, we learned about polar coordinates. And if you'll recall, x and y were related to r and theta by the system x equals r cosine theta and y equals r sine theta. These should look very familiar because on the unit circle, the coordinates x comma y are synonymous with cosine theta comma sine theta. The r value is missing because on the unit circle, the radius r is precisely one, so we don't see it. But we can extend this to any radius using r in front as a scalar. And then we know that um, via the distance formula, r squared is x squared plus y squared. We can also get a relationship between theta and the x and y coordinates using that tangent of theta is y over x. We can extend the polar coordinate system to three dimensions just by introducing the z variable. And z, we're just gonna leave exactly as z. There is no um, difference from rectangular coordinates to cylindrical coordinates in as far as z is concerned. So we have our rectangular coordinate system over here first, which is what we're familiar with. You can see why it's called rectangular coordinate systems, because if we go out to some point x, y, z, we move x along the x-axis, y along the y, z along the z, and it makes this kind of rectangular prism here. For cylindrical coordinates, we have r and theta just as we did in polar coordinates. Remember, r is telling you your radial, the length of your radial arm out from the origin. Theta is telling how far you're sweeping um, counterclockwise in the xy axis. And then z truly just is z, as it always has been. Um, we will restrict our radius to non-negative values. This is different from polar coordinates where we were allowing negative radii. And we will also restrict theta between zero and two pi, strictly less than two pi. So we're not gonna consider um, negative radii or um, excuse me, negative theta values or going around multiple times. A brand new coordinate system that we've never seen before is gonna be spherical coordinates. I want to note here that this middle value theta is precisely the same as it was in cylindrical. Theta is still representing how far we're swinging our radial axis outward in the xy coordinate system. However, we have two new coordinates here, rho and phi. Um, just a quick note here that when I write phi instead of this, I tend to use a cursive phi. So these are synonymous and they mean the same thing. This guy right here is typically capital phi, um, but I'll use this cursive one when I'm writing. So what do these values mean here? So rho, very similar to r, is going to be the distance from the origin out to your spherical point. And so you can see that being represented right here. It's this hypotenuse. So from the origin, out to your point in three space. It is truly that distance away from the origin. So what the heck is phi? Phi is an angle just as theta is, and it's the angle from the positive z axis out to the um, radial line that connects your point P with the origin O. So it's important to note that phi is relating to the positive z-axis. Now, we have a note down below here, very similar to cylindrical, we're only going to talk about non-negative row values, so you can't have some kind of a negative radius since we're talking about a distance. Theta has the same restriction as is cylindrical coordinates, and we're going to specifically restrict phi from zero to pi. So what's our reasons for that? Remember, phi is telling you the distance from the positive z-axis, and so that allows us to swing from positive z all the way down to negative z. 
right? So you're like, well, what if we wanted to go this direction? Wouldn't we need to go more than pi? No, we'll take care of that with our theta. So we would then swing this around this way using the appropriate theta value. So with theta working in conjunction with phi, we'll actually be able to access all of the points on a sphere. So at the bottom of page one, I have this table here that is going to give you all of the various conversions between those three different coordinate systems. Um, I listed here the restrictions on theta, on phi, on r, and on rho. Uh, uh, so those will always be given to you. And then again, all of the various ways we can go between any pair of coordinate systems. This table, along with the remark, will always be provided for you on any quizzes or exams in which you're going to be using these various coordinate systems. So I don't want you to focus on memorizing these equations. Rather, I want you to be able to access this table and use them to make whatever appropriate conversions you need um, in that particular case. So just a quick note here. These first two sets of equations should look very familiar. So these two right here and these two right here were what we talked about up in the top of the page. Those are just the same equations we saw in section 10.2 when we introduced polar coordinates. And for the z variable, z is z, right? There's nothing we need to do here to convert because both of them use that exact same coordinate. Similarly, theta is theta when you're working with spherical and cylindrical. They share that same coordinate system. But we do have new equations here with r and rho as well as z. And then um, you'll see when we're working with rectangular to spherical, we've got all kinds of good stuff here. Um, again, don't focus on memorizing these, but make sure you know how to utilize these. So what we'd like to do is practice our skills in converting from one coordinate system to the other. We're going to do this both by converting points, but also by converting entire equations. So let me first just clean up all of my markings on this table. Well, maybe. There we go. And then we will refer back to this table as we're doing our conversions. All right, so let's start with um, problem two from the textbook, part A. Uh, we want to convert this point, square root of two, negative square root of two, one, from rectangular to cylindrical coordinates. So what I like to do first is I like to know what coordinates I have. I have the coordinates x, y, and z, which are given by square root of two, negative square root of two, and one. My goal is to find cylindrical coordinates, and cylindrical coordinates are r, theta, and z. I already know what z is. z is 1. So I really only need to find two values here, r and theta. So if we look back up here, recall that r is the square root of x squared plus y squared. So we're going to use that equation here to find r. I'll, whoops, I'll show my work down below. R is going to be the positive square root of x squared plus y squared. So that is the square root of 2 plus 2, which is 2. So I'll fill that in for my R coordinate. Next, we need to find theta. So again, let me scroll back up here. Theta is given by tangent of theta is y over x, or in other words, theta is tangent inverse of y over x. So I have tangent of theta is y over x, which in this case is negative square root of 2 over square root of 2, or negative 1. So we conclude that theta is tangent inverse of negative 1. So now we know that theta is restricted between 0 and 2 pi. The worry here is that there are actually two values on the unit circle at which the um, tangent function takes on negative 1. So this occurs at theta equals 3 pi halves in the second quadrant, or excuse me, 3 pi quarters in the second quadrant, but it also occurs in the fourth quadrant at 7 pi fourths. 
Now, both of these can't be right. So we need to discern which one of these is right and which one of these is wrong. In order to do this, we need to go back up to our original coordinate and in rectangular coordinates, figure out in terms of the X and Y values, which quadrant would the X, Y coordinate fall in in two dimensions? So what I see is I have a positive X and a negative Y. So that is falling into quadrant four, which then tells me that my theta value is gonna be between three pi halves and two pi. Using that clue by looking at the signs of X and Y, I can rule out three pi quarters and identify theta as seven pi quarters. So let's fill in the gap here. I just found that theta was seven pi quarters and Z is Z as it always was. So my final answer here is at the point root two negative root two one is equivalent, equivalent to two seven pi fourths one in cylindrical coordinates. All right, let's do some more examples here. For this next problem, we are given a point in cylindrical coordinates and we wanna go back to rectangular coordinates. So as in the last example, since the point given is in cylindrical, I like to identify what uh, variables we know here. We know R, theta, and Z. Again, Z is Z, so there's nothing we need to do with that last coordinate. We are seeking X, Y, and Z. All right, so now we're going from cylindrical to rectangular. Let's scroll back up here. I wanna find X and Y, which are given right here. There's no ambiguity going in this direction. We're just finding R cosine theta and R sine theta. So let's go ahead and find those values. X is R cosine theta which is six cosine of five pi thirds. Now five pi thirds lies in the fourth quadrant, so I know that the cosine value, which is related to the x value, is gonna be positive. So let me just write a plus sign here, and then let's figure out what that cosine value is. I always like to draw my special triangle so that I don't have to memorize them. So this is pi over six up top, this is pi over three down here, and this is the right angle. One, two, square root of three. So my reference angle is pi over three, and if I'm finding cosine, cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. So let's add that in of one half. And so this tells me that my x coordinate is three. Let's also find the y coordinate, which is our sine theta six times sine of five pi over three. Now, as we stated, five pi over three is in the fourth quadrant. Since sine is the y coordinate, we know that that's gonna be negative. So I'm just gonna put that sine in before I even do anything else. And then looking at my reference tri triangle, sine is opposite over hypotenuse. So we're gonna have the square root of three over two. So this gives me a y value of three root three. I'll fill that in, negative three root three. And then z is z. So that is our final answer here. We get three, negative three root three, and seven is the rectangular coordinate that is identical to the coordinate six, five pi third, seven in cylindrical coordinates. So we've done an example of going back and forth between cylindrical and rectangular in both directions. Let's get some practice with spherical. So we have a rectangular coordinate, which is X, Y, Z, and that equals four, four, and four square root of six. We would like to find the corresponding spherical coordinates. So spherical coordinates are given as rho, theta, phi. All right, so here's our goal. Let's scroll back up and see how we can find each of these variables. So starting with rho. All right, so rho here is the square root of x squared plus y squared plus z squared. So keeping that in mind, 
let's use that equation square root of x squared plus y squared plus z squared. So that's going to be the square root of 16 plus 16 plus 16 times 6. All right, what I'm going to do is I'm going to factor a 16 out of here. And that would leave me with 1 plus 1 plus 6, which is 8. Square root of 16 is 4. And I can reduce that square root of 8 to 2 root 2. So I get 8 root 2 for my row value. So here's row. Let's take a look at theta next. So scrolling up here again, theta is the same as it was in cylindrical coordinates. So it's going to be tangent inverse of y over x. Now we still have this issue of identifying um, which of those tangent inverse values we want. So we're going to do the exact same trick as we did in 2a by identifying which quadrant our xy coordinate point lies in. So if you look back up at our original point, both x and y are positive, which tells me we're in quadrant 1. So our theta values are going to be between 0 and pi over 2. So keeping that in mind, let's plug in our y and x values, which is 4 over 4. So we have a tangent inverse of 1, and that would generally be at either pi over 4 or 5 pi over 4, but we know to choose 5 uh, pi over 4 we will omit 5 pi over 4 because that doesn't lie in the first quadrant. All right, so let's fill in these two blanks. We found rho to be 8 squared to 2 and theta to be pi over 4. The last one we need is phi. So let's scroll up and see how we can find phi. So we're looking right here, cosine of phi is z over rho. So this is assuming you've already found your row value, which we have. So let me write that formula. Cosine of phi is z over rho. So z over rho was 4 root 6, and then rho was 8 root 2. That looks awful. So let's simplify here. <clears throat> this is going to be the square root of 6 over 2 root 2. Let me multiply by root 2 over root 2. So that is the square root of 12 over 4. Um, the square root of 12 is 2 square root of 3. And so finally, if I simplify here, I get root 3 over 2. That looks like something that is familiar. So now let me draw my special triangle here in the margin. So 1, 2, square root of 3. Which of these angles has a cosine value of square root of 3 over 2? So that's going to be this upper angle here because we have an adjacent of root 3 and an hypotenuse of 2. That is the little angle pi over 6. So we conclude that phi is pi over 6. Remember with phi, there is no ambiguity of taking cosine inverse because phi is restricted to um, 0 to pi. So cosine is positive in quadrant 1, negative in quadrant 2, and we are not even looking at quadrants 3 or 4. So we don't have to worry about that. So let's fill that in up top here. And this is our spherical coordinate point that is going to represent the rectangular point 4, 4, and 4 square root of 6. We have three more examples just to illustrate the other three ways to convert between the uh, various three coordinate systems. So continuing on in this fashion, now we want to go from spherical to rectangular. So if we're starting with a spherical point, that's of the form rho, theta, phi, and we have 1, 2 pi over 3, and 3 pi over 4. <clears throat> 
our goal is to find x, y, and z. So let's write out x, y, and z, and then let's scroll back up to see what those corresponding equations are. They're kind of the bizarre looking equations, so bear with me as I scroll here. X is rho sine phi cosine theta, Y is rho sine phi sine theta, and Z is rho cosine phi. So you'll notice that both X and Y have the same beginning, just cosine is related to X and sine theta is related to Y, and then Z is kind of its own. So let's copy these down below. So starting with X is rho sine phi cosine theta rho sine phi cosine theta. Y was rho sine phi sine theta. And then Z was the odd, oddball rho cosine phi. All right, so again, no monkey business here. We are literally plugging in rho, phi, and theta into these equations and seeing what we get back out directly. So this uh, x is going to be 1 times sine of 2 pi over 3 times cosine of 3 pi over 4. And let me just go ahead and fill in the other ones as well. All right. Let's draw our reference triangle. So here's pi over three, which is what we want. One, two, square root of three. And so looking at this top one here, what is sine of pi over three? Sine of pi over three using SOHCAHTOA is root three over two. Two pi over three is in the second quadrant. So the sine value, which is y, is gonna be positive. So I have one times the positive root three over two. And then cosine of three pi over four is a negative root two over two. So we get a final value of and I was just noticing here that I flip flop my theta and v values. So theta and phi are here and here. Let's go ahead and correct that before we go any further. This value inside sine should be phi, and I wrote the wrong one. So this should be 3 pi fourths, and let's correct what's inside cosine. I do apologize here. This should be a 2 pi thirds. All right, so correcting those before we get any further. We should have instead sine of 3 pi fourths, that is going to be a positive root 2 over 2, and cosine of 2 pi thirds is going to be a negative 1 half. There we go. So now what we have for our answer here is a negative root 2 over 4. All right, let's fix these other ones as well. So z is rho cosine phi, where phi is 3 pi fourths, and 3 pi fourths here sine of two pi thirds. There we have it. Okay, so now we still have a one times root two over two. What is sine of two pi thirds? So that's what we were talking about when we were incorrectly doing this last time. Uh, using SOHCAHTOA, we get square root of three over two, and it's going to be positive because we're in the second quadrant. So for this value here, we're getting a positive square root of six over four. For the last value here, we have one times, um, we have a negative root two over two for the cosine value. All right, so we can now fill in all of our coordinates here. X is negative root two over four, Y is positive root six over four, and Z is negative root two over two. All right, so lesson learned. Make sure that you know which coordinate is which when you're plugging in those radian values. All right, and for our final two, we're switching between spherical and cylindrical. So looking at those two, we're starting with a point that's cylindrical, which is of the form r theta, um, 
phi, uh, excuse me, not phi, r theta z. And so that is four, five pi six, four. Our spherical coordinates are rho theta phi. Now, again, we already know what theta is. We don't need to do any kind of um, conversion for that middle coordinate, but we do need to work with uh, rho and phi. So let's scroll back up to that table there. All right, how are we going to find rho? Rho is going to be the square root of r squared plus z squared, and phi is going to be tangent inverse of r over z. All right, so let's carry that down. So rho is the square root of r squared plus z squared. And phi is going to be tangent inverse of r over z. All right, so plugging all of this information in, rho is going to be the square root of 16 plus 16, which is going to be 4 square root of 2, if I factor out a 16. And then this is going to be a tangent inverse of 4 over 4. Once again, tangent inverse of 1 is going to be pi over 4, and there's no ambiguity here. So our final coordinate is going to be 4 square root of 2. The theta value stays the same, 5 pi over 6. And uh, phi here is going to be pi over 4. All right. So we have one more point conversion. We're going from spherical to cylindrical. So we have a coordinate of the form r theta phi. And that is 5 pi over 2, 0. We would like to find cylindrical r theta z. All right. So for this one, let's scroll back up for the final time here. And we are going to use the fact that r is going to be rho sine phi and z is rho cosine phi. So keeping those in mind, let's copy those down. r is rho sine phi r is rho sine phi and z is rho cosine phi. All right, so we have five sine of zero, but sine of zero is zero, so we get r equals zero. And z is five cosine zero, which is gonna be five. So our cylindrical coordinates are zero, pi over two, five. All right, so this concludes our examples of converting various points from one coordinate system to another. And we're gonna end this section by translating some equations from one coordinate system to another and then plotting what their graph looks like. So we have a couple exa examples on page four. We have the equation z equals r cosine theta is given in cylindrical coordinates. We want to express this in rectangular coordinates and sketch the graph. So if you recall, when we're working with cylindrical and rectangular coordinates, we know that x is r cosine theta and y is r sine theta. So when I look at the equation that I'm given, that right-hand side is precisely x. So I'm going to write this as z equals x. This is now in rectangular coordinates. You know you're in rectangular coordinates once you have only x's, y's, and z's. All of your r's and thetas are gone. So we would like to identify and sketch this graph. Since everything is linear here, this is going to be a plane. 
Remember, this is a uh, cylindrical surface because we're missing one of the variables. So what we want to do is plot the um, line x equals z in the xz plane. So that's just this diagonal line here. And then we want to extrude along the missing variable, which in this case is y. So I'm going to extrude to the right, but you could have, of course, extruded to the left. And here is my kind of slant plane in this case. Let's also look at 23. So the equation we're given is r equals 4 sine theta. This is also in cylindrical coordinates. We want to express it in rectangular and sketch the graph. So again, remember, just as before, we have x equals r cosine theta and we have y equals r sine theta. I see a sine theta on this side, but I am missing an r. So I am going to force an r in by multiplying this entire equation by r. That gives me r squared equals 4r sine theta. Now I also have the equation that r squared is x squared plus y squared. So substituting that in on the left-hand side, I have x squared plus y squared. And on the right-hand side, r sine theta is y, so I have a 4y. Let me go ahead and put this into standard form so that I can accurately sketch this graph. This is x squared plus y squared minus 4y. Leave a blank and leave a blank. So let's complete the square. There is now zero currently on the right-hand side. If I complete the square, half of negative four is negative two, and negative two squared is four, which I'll add to the other side. And then writing these as a perfect square, I have x squared plus y minus two squared equals four. All right, z variable is missing. So this is another cylindrical surface in three dimensions. Notice that this in two dimensions is a circle. So let's plot that in the xy plane. It's a circle with center at 0, 2, and radius 2. So let me go out 2 along the y-axis. Here is my center. I want a radius 2, so I need to go 2 in either direction on the y. Let me add in my ghost axis along the z. So we're going to go 1, 2, 1, 2. Okay, and sketch in this circle. I'm going to make it solid in front and dashed in back. And then you can extrude either vertically uh, upward or downward or both. I'll do both. and then sketch in some extra mesh lines to give a little bit more dimension here. All right, and so we can see why this is called cylindrical coordinates, right? We're creating a cylinder in this case. All right, we just have two more examples to finish out these notes. Let's look at number 30. These two examples are given in spherical coordinates. So let me just write this out once more. Rho equals two secant of feet. All right, now the first thing that I'm noticing is this secant function. We didn't have any equations whatsoever that involved secant. So let me use that quotient identity to rewrite this as two over cosine of phi. We know that some of the equations involved cosine. So just kick that cosine of phi over to the other side of the equation. We get rho cosine phi equals two. So if you recall, rho cosine phi was z. That was the z variable. So we get z equals two. This is a plane in three space. So here's the point z equals two. We can at first extrude along the missing y variable. So I'll go in both directions, but again, you could go in one direction or the other. And then we also need to extrude along the x axis. So this is just a plane that is 
parallel to the xy coordinate plane shifted up two units on the z axis. So this is the plane z equals two. All right, finally, let's take a look at problem 34. We have another equation given in spherical coordinates. So we have rho minus two sine phi cosine theta equals zero. Now, let's go ahead and revisit that table to see which equation makes the most sense. So we need to remember that we have a sine phi cosine theta. So let's look back up at the table and see if we had any equations that had sine phi cosine theta. So right here we see x equals rho sine phi cosine theta. We're only missing this rho value. So let's go ahead and rig it up by multiplying by a rho through this entire equation. That'll give me rho squared minus two rho sine phi cosine theta equals zero. Now I recognize all in these parentheses to be x. And then if you'll recall, rho squared is x squared plus y squared plus z squared. So I'm gonna replace all of those expressions. At this very moment in time, I would give you full credit right here for transforming that spherical equation into rectangular coordinates. Once you have only x, y's, and z's and no rows, phi's, or thetas, you have succeeded in writing it in rectangular coordinates. However, this probably isn't enough for us to accurately sketch what this equation is. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put it in standard form. So let's collect the x terms together and then the y and z terms are kind of hanging out by themselves. And let's complete the square. Half of negative two is negative one, squared is one. And so in standard form, this is x minus one squared plus y squared plus z squared equals one. So this would be the standard rectangular equation. And we recognize this to be a sphere with center one, zero, zero, and radius one. So let's accurately sketch that. So I'm gonna come out one on the x-axis, and then we want to sketch the sphere with radius one. So here's the equator. And then we also wanna go up and down one on the z-axis. All right, and as always, if you wanna sketch some additional mesh lines, you, you certainly can do that as well. So this is a sphere here in three space. So this concludes chapter 11 for our notes. We will dive into chapter 12 in the next video.